Ooh. Oh, damn. Yo, <laughs> school is in session. Said, recess is over. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is recess. I consider this, this is recess. recess. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mac Flash Five, the show where we like to get together and and list our top five movies fitting a certain certain topic. My name is Matthew. Next to me is AB. Under him is Mike, and next to him is Scott. Uh, uh that's Mister. M FM too. Yeah. No, you don't have a doctorate where you're not professor? <laughs> no, I'm a teacher. I Mr. Oh. Teacher. And fitting that you're a teacher because today our topic is school movies. Around the office, we've been calling them back to school movies because it just sounds a little bit better, but it's school movies nonetheless. This was one of Mike's picks. Like he mentioned, he's a teacher and he's going to explain why he picked this topic. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and and he's also going to explain how his school year has been going so far. Uh, no, I'm not. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's not going to come up because that's a whole that's another show. We'll do that some other time. Um, uh, but, I had but to, before yeah, we do that, explain. I just yep. need to explain yep. how the show works. Uh, after we set a topic, in this case, it's school movies. We go our separate ways and we create a top five list individually. We then come back and we list those top five movies, but uh, we do it. Um, we talk about we talk about three of those movies in depth, and two of them will be honorable mentions. Now, Mike, what is your number three? Well, before I tell you my number three, I want to tell you what inspired this list because it's not just because I teach. In fact, I have to tell you, some of you guys know that my folks religiously watch this show, and each week they tell me the you know what worked and what didn't work even though i didn't necessarily ask for all of those pieces of information but they tell me what worked and what didn't work and what they enjoyed but the funny part is each week my dad's like hey i got a new idea for a topic here'd be a, here's a good topic and each week he tries to sort of feed me a topic and which is cool it's interesting i like to hear his ideas this one resonated because school was coming back it's kind of a big uh, year uh you know a lot of new things happening and he had read an article and he said hey i saw this this might be a cool topic. And I went, okay, you got me there. This is a cool topic. It's our and first so, Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Patreon's pick. Yeah. So that's uh, what inspired this. Um, I genuinely myself didn't even think of it. And then when he said it, I went, oh, I already know what's making my list. So here we go. Um, so starting off at number three, and I will preface to say that my list, um, my list tend to have some sort of a theme. And in this case, my back to school films are not your happy go lucky. This is a party time sort of films. They're sort of like dark, depressing, kind of like, sort of like, like how I experienced high school. <laughs> yeah. The, the actual feeling of going back yeah. to school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we'll start it off right with uh, uh, one of my favorite directors, uh, Wes Anderson, 1998. And uh, we will hit you with a little bit of Rushmore. So that is yes. That's funny. That is amazing. So happy. My number three. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot because I'm going to try and save some more time for my ones and twos. But um, I just redid this one literally like yesterday because um, it had been. I've seen a lot of his other ones, Wes Anderson's, over and over and over. And Rushmore wasn't one I had seen over and over, but it is one that anytime I think of it, I think of school. Obviously, it's a private school setting. It's very different, and uh, and it does skew off to the whole relationship. But man, the dynamic between the competition between um, Max, which is uh, Schwartzman's character, and Herman, which is Bill Murray's character, and the concept of one's fifteen and the other one's a full-grown married man with twins, high, like high school age <laughs> twins, competing for this. Uh, I think I think she's is she British? I can't remember now. Yeah. Um, um, teacher that comes and teaches at the school and the and how like you kind of have to just sort of go. Oh, I guess they'll compete for her. He's fifteen <laughs> and all, but and and it just it's so wackily entertaining. And uh, I like Schwartzman in lots of things, but this is to me his best role. Like this is like 
you watch him in other things, and I know this is one of his first ones, right? But you watch him in other things, and you're just always thinking that he's trying to be Max Fisher over he's a and over in this movie. They or- yeah. orbit Schwartzman yeah. in Rushmore. Absolutely. And, and, and sort of my, my favorite quote, because he has the most ridiculous things that he says, and, and he's in all those clubs and everything. And my favorite line in this movie, and I'll, I'll leave it at that, is, I saved Latin. What'd you ever do? Like, I just think, <laughs> I think that's the greatest. Like, okay, buddy. <laughs> no one at the school cares. But anyways, it, that's my number three, coming in a little bit dark comedy. And, and co-written by Owen Wilson. A lot of people don't know that. But uh, he's not in it. His brother is. Um, His brothers but, are in it. Um, His brother's in it too. Yep. Oh, do you see? Oh, who does he play? Because you don't know. He's, I don't the, know. Uh, he's the gym teacher. Gym teacher. Andrew Wilson okay. is the gym okay. teacher. Because you never is in oh, one sir? scene and a picture. He plays he's the deceased sure. husband. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, deceased yeah, husband. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, not acting, right? Like not on no, film no. as far. But uh, so a lot of people don't really know that, um, and so you wonder why Wilson's in like a lot of other Wes Anderson movies. Well, it's because they have those writing uh, together things. So that's my number three. For back to school, my oh, favorite, so my favorite oh, Rushmore yeah. scene. I like, I like your nurse's outfit. Well, these are my OR scrubs. Oh, are they? And then <laughs> Murray's laugh is insane. That movie, that part, is incredible. It's my favorite part. It's so funny. The, the, the whole scene where he just is just like fluffing off uh, is Luke, Luke there. Wilson, he's just, yeah. just like, oh, whatever, dude. Yeah, he's calling them all different things. <laughs> Yeah, I I also just rewatched this last night for this, uh, nice. and uh, uh, yeah, there's so many things. But like, we kind of talked off air about this. Well, not off air, kind of on air. But uh, um, his plays are yes. kill me every time. Like Serpico, yeah. the play, yeah. and then it's like uh, just it's platoon like or whatever Vietnam. it is. It's yeah. Like, yeah, platoon, I'm like, yeah. I w- I need this in my life. Like I need someone to make Serpico the play, and oh. like he's a, he's a, basically a high school kid making standing ovation. The, the crowd, was... I would give him a standing yeah. ovation too. It's amazing, and I, like I love too. Like they're shooting out the window. Oh, there's the target, and they start shooting out the window yeah. and stuff like that. And then they were like, okay, well, uh, to the as audience, and be like, okay, uh, we put safety goggles and uh, ear. Yeah, earmuff, earmuffs under the, the seat if you need them. Yes, so the, like explosions are <laughs> well, happening. It's like, exactly. I mean, I'm that ready. example tells you his character because he's yeah. failing all his classes and he's going to get That's expelled. Right, but he because he's in like Brain fifty cops. clubs and yeah. he's doing like he puts all his energy into everything else. Yeah, but actually yeah. doing the schoolwork, <laughs> so. including my favorite scene where uh, they're breaking ground. Yeah. Uh, for the aquarium for the aquarium yeah. right in yeah. the middle of like the baseball diamond no yes. permits or plans or anything and then the coach shows up what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna run and go get guggenheim the headmaster to come yeah. stop the whole thing yeah. brian cox Love yeah. Him. Brian, yeah that's right yeah yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like it too because it, as goofy it is and ridiculous it is, it also has a lot of heart too. Oh yeah, the relationship between him and his father, uh, even though like he kind of lies yes. about his father, saying yeah. his father's like a surgeon or whatever. Yeah, but he's he a barber. A great, great relationship with him, and, and like his father's kind of like, you know, not really, you know, domineering over him at all. Like he's mm-hmm. letting him do what he wants. Supports to do, him, yeah. Supports him, and uh, but he's like when he's helping him out of the barber shop, he's like, I love having you here and spending yeah. time with that's you. That's one it's thing that great. Wes Wes always does well in his films is the fatherly son relationships are all really good. Now Zuzu is kind of a little fractured but ultimately he gets there but like Budapest Hotel he always does like really good heart older younger relationships. For sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so there was like in the rewatch last night I was like, man, that is a great relationship but the uh, between Yeah. Yeah, that's lost on that. a first viewing. You, like you yeah. you catch it on the second or third viewing, yeah. And like and and I love it and uh, like it really got to me at the end too when he's he introduces his father to everyone after his play, right? And he's mm. like, my father, he's a barber. I'm like Oh yeah, and he said, "Oh, you're a Brit- you're a surgeon, aren't you?" Yeah. No, I'm a barber. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. yeah. Huh. Awesome. Love All right, Scott, movie. what you got? Cool. So my number three was a movie I saw when it first came out and loved it. Shockingly, haven't revisited it until I was like, you know what I want to revisit for this? And I watched it, and I watched it twice last week. And I actually rewatched it Friday before we did trivia and again on Sunday. And fired up. It's 2015, directed by Rick Famuyiwa. And it's dope. Nice. Mm. 
Yeah, so Very dope cool. what it is. It went super, super low-key, super under the radar, but it stars Malcolm. And that uh, gentleman on the left there, he's actually the voice of Miles Morales in Spider-Man in, Into the Spider-Verse. So what a career that dude has led off with. Um, Shamik, Shamik Moore, Shal- Shalamik Moore, I think is his name. Uh, again, so in Dope, basically they play three friends uh, that are in East L.A. And they're obsessed with like 90s rap culture. So there's a ton of like rap references in the east and west side and he's just an absolute music head um so there's a lot of that and that's what he wants he's got the high fade for that because he wants to look like kid and play and as the movie goes on he gets crossed in this uh this drug deal and this drug trade uh the drug dealer played by asap rocky who's a popular actual modern day rapper um and then like a stanfield's in it plays the bully at the school uh it takes place in in high school as well where they walk through the uh, metal detectors and in doing so Um, he has to start selling the drugs for the drug dealer who's his almost admissions counselor into Harvard. It's this long, convoluted story. It plays better when you actually watch the movie itself. Uh, And then it kind of becomes this, like, risky business-style adventure sort of thing. But, like I said, the themes throughout it, um, the the black culture of it with he wanting to go in Harvard. And they they make funny, like, tongue-in-cheek jokes narrated by Lawrence Fishburne and he's like these are his friends they were into white shit like getting good grades and <laughs> being nice to people and you see it you're like being nice that's, to people. yeah that's very funny but again as the movie goes and he starts gaining a little bit of an edge and it's kind of like what we talked with cops films um that uh you know you kind of need that you start off really goody goody but then you get that edge and it kind of allows him to come out of his shell and um the movie opens up with the three meanings of dope dope was somebody who doesn't fit in with a lower education, um, the drug term for dope and something being extra cool and awesome. And this movie really hits on all three. And it's kind of like the first act, the second act and the third act uh, intertwined. So for me, it's a perfect name for a film. Mm. Uh, And then as it goes, it's just this incredible kind of thing where they're, they're in school. So there's so much of school. They're in the school. They're using the science to kind of cut and sell the drugs. They're selling them for Bitcoin. So it's untraceable. Uh, and again, it just ends on like an incredible like montage where he's he's talking about and writing his thesis to Harvard. Fun fact, his first thesis in Harvard was dissecting ice cubes. Today was a good day. And they like laugh him out of the building on that. So his next thesis is a little bit more serious and played straight. Uh, and again, it's just a super cool movie. It's, it's if nothing else, it's very cool and hip and just speaks to me. And again, beginning to end, it's just a, an awesome kind of like relatively takes place in the span of two three days um but a, a great cool modern hit telling of uh, that last you know, year when did that 2015 come out? five years ago oh. yeah. yeah but yeah so it's got uh yeah it's uh, like zaza beats and zoe kravitz and then the other buddy is tony revoli revoli who's the lobby boy from um uh, budapest hotel so yeah Super cool movie. They, they have, and what I like about it too is they have their own little band, and Do they have uh, like a punk band. Have, yeah, and it, they make they make songs, and the songs are actually really great. Yeah. The songs are on the soundtrack, and I love the songs that they 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 perform. And I think the songs I, I have the soundtrack, and uh, I actually love the original songs on there. Sure. I'm trying to think what the what's the <laughs> band called? They're Oreo. Oreo, but it's spelled That's weird, the, right? Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, that's one of the things I liked a lot about it too is they have these ambitions of being musicians and they're, they're, yeah. they're great songs they, they come up with. Cool. And again, they get away with selling drugs because they're nerds and when they go through and they get through the metal detector and it's loaded with guns and stuff, they're just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys, you nerds are good. You guys can go. <laughs> and it's like, this is great. So yeah, super cool school movie. My number three. Nice. Um, let's see. My number three is similar in a certain fashion fashion it's uh, about a bunch of uh high school seniors who also are trying to get into harvard uh different side of the tracks though my number three is school ties ah thank goodness like it it, it didn't make my list and it was like number six really yeah um and if you look at the the poster it's a great i think think this is a dvd cover this is from 1992 and it's a real you know clear look at young hollywood of the time absolutely um clear i mean the two standouts are obviously matt damon and ben affleck who are superstars today brendan fraser is not doing too bad uh chris o- chris o'donnell he's still on tv right yeah uh, 
in CIS, Ooh, CIS LA. LA. Yeah, that's right. Um, stories about uh, Brendan Fraser's character. He uh, lives in Pennsylvania. He's, part, he's a <clears throat> member of a working class Jewish family. He uh, he uh, goes to a public high school, but he does well in his grades, and he plays uh, football really well. That this prep school in uh, you know somewhere in Massachusetts uh, recruits him. They give him a scholarship. And he quickly learns that uh, all of his classmates are, you know, waspy types and they're really prejudiced against uh, people of the Jewish faith. Um, so he hides that for a long time. Matt Damon plays kind of his friend, but rival, even before he realizes uh, that uh, Brendan Fraser is uh, Jewish. He, he's like the backup quarterback to the uh, football team because Brendan Fraser took that part, took that uh, position. Um, uh, he's hitting on Matt Damon's girlfriend and she's into him as well. Um, he's becoming far more popular. Um, and then after they win a big game, uh, Matt Damon, uh, discovers that, uh, Brendan Fraser's Jewish and he spreads it around school and all of his, you know, his classmates, they're, they're not fans of him anymore. They don't like him. They, they want him out. And it, uh, brings me to one of the, uh, Hard, well, I guess, hardest scenes in the movie. Uh, Frazier's walking into his uh, dorm room, and they've hung up a banner, and it says "Go home," or yeah, "Go home, Jew," or "Jew, go home." And right underneath that is a big swastika, which I mean, it's not enough to uh, say "Go home," we don't want your kind here, but in a way, they're saying we're Nazis. We we're gonna kill you. I mean, I'm sure that's not the message they're trying to say, but for for from his point yeah. of view, that's what that looks like. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not like that we don't like you. We are going to kill you if you stay here. Um, mm -hmm. Which I mean, they don't. Thankfully, he just wants to stick it uh, stick out the rest of the school year because they're seniors. He just has to do one year, and then he's off to Harvard. He hopes he has to keep his uh, keep up his grades. And you know, play good football. Matt Damon is in, like I said, he's in the same boat, but uh, scholastically, he's not doing very well. And he's they he cheats on his test. And two of the class, Brendan Fraser and one of the other classmates, catch him doing that. Now the school has like an honor system code. The teacher's not in the room while they're taking a test, which is, I mean, one of the weirder <laughs> things. I mean, Mike, maybe you could attest that Pick that may next. not work out. Yeah, not a good idea. No. Um, so the teacher finds out one of them uh, has cheated and all of the classmates are of course pointing their fingers at Brendan Fraser. He, obviously, he cheated. He's Jewish. He doesn't belong here. Kick him out. And they all vote to that fact at the end, um, until the, uh, one of the, uh, the other classmate who saw Matt Damon cheat says to the headmaster, I saw him cheat as well. We're not, we can't throw out. I wish I could remember any of their names in the movie. Oh, I watched yeah. this movie just, you know, uh, last week. But uh, I, you get the point. School Ties, number three. It's really good. And <laughs> while I was watching it, it was interesting. I was, I was wondering, because it takes place in the mid-50s. And I was wondering, what if, like, Marty McFly went back to 1955 and he discovered, like, Matt Damon is his father? And he sees what he's going through? Because oh clearly... God. <laughs> They'll be like Biff is his dad. Yes, almost. Yeah, that's just Biff is his dad. And you know, the memorable scene is that one in the rain with him standing yeah. out in the rain. That's right after he sees the poster. Yeah, yeah, it's great. He he oh. uh, pins. Uh, he doesn't pin something to the bulletin board. He sticks. I think he sticks a knife into right. a note saying, "Whoever yeah. drew the swastika, I'll meet you outside." Yeah. He's out in the rain. Nobody yeah. comes out, and he yells out, "Cowards!" cowards. To all of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a it's a powerful movie. It's I, powerful too in the timing it came out because that was like probably one of my first sort of films that I watched because at that age that I was at, I was I did you say ninety two? Came out ninety two. Yeah. Yeah. So like I wasn't in I was wasn't in high school yet. Just gonna be soon. And yeah. uh, it, first sort of film that I watched that I could get what was happening, get the content, and go, oh man, there's idiots like this out there. Like this yeah. is. Crazy. Easy, mm -hmm. um, and sort of absorb that, you know, and then later on in life, you see like American History X and stuff like that. But you, that was like a powerful movie to show that sort of like how this is 
this is not how we want things to go in life, right? That's that's a solid pick. I like that movie. I, I, I assume that was going to be on your list, so uh, I'm glad that he put it on there and that you said you're not. He, it's not on your list because I was like. <laughs> When this came up, then this came up, I was like, "Oh, well, School Ties is going to be on Mike's list." So, so I enjoy it. Yeah, I know sure. you love that movie. Yeah, I saw it for the. I think I don't know if it's a traditional thing for schools to do it, but I certainly watched it before I went in high school as well. It's grade eight, and I think they're like, "Okay, this is almost to prepare you for high school." Watch oh, really? this movie in a way. You know? <laughs> you're like you're going to be dealing with some Nazi assholes. Here you, go, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you take you challenge them outside in the, right. rain. in the rain with knives in the bulletin board. <laughs> this is how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. It's like classes at the, at the saw there. cop trying not to steal somebody's girlfriend. Yes, <laughs> that's always been my rule. <laughs> Obviously, uh, AB, you're up next. All right, we're going to go with my number three. So my number three is a nice heartwarming tale that was written by uh, my favorite author. This is his first book he ever published. Uh, and it was made into a movie in 1976 by Mr. Brian De Palma. Cool. It's heartwarming tale of <laughs> Harry White. Like, it's, heart such, it's, it's such a heartwarming tale. That, That's a cool one. That, of a nice, uh, you know, charming girl that uh, has a really great time in high school. And so, uh, Carrie uh, is a tale of a, a girl who's outcast in, in high school and picked on by uh, this is Nancy Allen and John Travolta. Uh, Nancy Allen needs a girl, a group of girls who terrorize uh, this girl, Carrie, and was played by Sissy Spacek um, in, in the school. And she has her first period uh, in the in the locker room when uh, she's uh, 16 at the time and she doesn't know she's raised in a really religious uh, household uh, just her and her mom and that's, that's Piper Laurie Laurie is her mom and she's really great in this movie but uh, she doesn't she's never had her period before she doesn't know what a period is and so she starts freaking out and the girls start viciously mocking her um, and so then that's the first clue that we have of these powers that we end up finding that uh, Carrie has and these uh, telekinetic powers. She bursts out with one of the lights. And so uh, as the film goes on, we find out more and more that she has these powers, that they um, they happen when she's really stressed out. Uh, and so one of the girls ends up feeling bad for her and she gets her boyfriend, which is played by the greatest American hero, William Cat, <laughs> uh, and he gets the, the most popular guy in the school. She gets him to to ask her out to the prom, uh, and so Carrie at first thinks it's a joke, and uh, and so like there's a really uh, really great uh, scene where Tommy's trying to convince her of to go to the prom with her with with him, and uh, basically like trying to convince her that it's not. To at her expense, it's not a joke, and they really want her to go and feel uh, belong like she belongs, and that she did that they actually want her to to be happy, and so she ends up going, and then horrible things ensue, obviously, um, and so the ending is obviously just brutal. Uh, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you because it's a spoiler, and it's a it's a obviously it's a horror movie, so bad things ensue, but. Uh, I, I really love this tale. I really love the story. And Sissy Spacek is incredible in it. You really feel her pain. You really feel for her uh, in this role. I think she's fantastic. I just did the audio book a couple of days ago and Sissy Spacek uh, narrates it, narrates oh. the, the audio book, hmm. which was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, the book uh, takes it to another level at the end of the, I did, I didn't realize the book took it to another level as far as the ending goes. <clears throat> literally like the entire like over 400 people get killed at the end and like the the entire town basically burns to the ground huh. uh in the book which i was like oh wow that's wild but uh i think that uh, this is a great picture of high school uh not so much as a real high school and we'll kind of get into that in in, in my next yeah. kind of pick but uh like the the, the t stereotypical high school where you have your popular kids and your your loser kids and there's these cliques and all the, like the the popular kids are just ruthless when it comes to the the outcasts and all that kind of stuff uh i don't think that 
happens as much in real life as it does. It's, I mean, but it's, it's accurate in the sense of everybody in high school, whether you're the popular kid or you're the geek, it's all about trying to get attention off of yourself. Self, yes. And, and it's all about sort of that negative attention somewhere else keeps the people off of you. And yeah. that's a, it's a perfect snapshot of that where it's like, uh, you know, you talk about going through uh, puberty and having a period and those things. And like, they're going to, they're going to feed on that. These girls are going to attack this because it's all we can. Okay. Look at her. This isn't happening to us. Ha ha yeah, ha. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it does that well. I mean, and who doesn't in high school? Who didn't wish to have telekinetic powers oh, to be God. able to, <laughs> to be able to like punish the people who harassed you throughout the? You know. One of the, one of my favorite scenes in there in the movie is um, basically right after she gets sent home after the whole period incident, uh, and she's walking home from school. And this there's this like little, and it happens in the book too. There's this little kid on his bike, and he's like circling around her and like mocking her and like things and all of a sudden she like she, you hear like the telekinesis like power like they make it makes a noise when she does it right she goes Brant! and like kid goes like head over heels off the bike like lands and he's like oh and he's laying on the ground and you're you're like <laughs> hey and they're like that's what you get and you're like, yeah. and like oh i love it i love the way and i just love the, uh, the way the kid falls and the way the kid like oh what the heck like what just happened and i'm like yes that's you that's on you kid <clears throat> but anyway <laughs> yeah that's my number three <laughs> it's uh interesting uh fact about uh carrie um brian de palma was sitting in on the star wars castings um so, and so sissy says sissy spacek and uh william cat tried out for princess leia and luke skywalker well, yeah. they didn't get those roles but brian de palma was like oh, i'll take them nice yeah mm. yeah because uh sissy spacek um doesn't really fit what the book goes by the book she's supposed to be uh fat and like pimple faced and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. like uh i think that but I, what <laughs> I, I think they really went well with what uh so with sissy spacek she's like you know bone skinny like they went the opposite way with it where she's so skinny and like has that really really pale complexion uh almost like no, it, it, she doesn't almost doesn't look like human because of like the red hair with the like the bone white complexion uh i mean she's beautiful and especially like they do a great job of her like dolling her up for the prom but like she looks really like jarring at the beginning they needed something to make the kids uh focus on right focus on her yeah and, and like yeah so I, I think that she again she she is incredible in that role it just knocks out of the park and we All can right. see John Travolta be a dick. Me sure. A dick in it. There's, there's a couple of films you can do that in. But... <laughs> sure. A couple of school films, actually. Yeah, that's true. That is true. A fact. All right. Let's let's keep it moving here. Um, my number two really was fighting with my number one. I mean, if my number one wasn't a lock from day one, this would have been there. And I know somebody above me who agrees. Uh, my number two was written as a book by the director of the film. So you can't really go wrong there right off the hop. It's 2012's The Perks of Being mm. a Wallflower. Uh, this, you know, we talk about sort of, we were talking about with Carrie, sort of the realisms in movies. And, and for me, a, a good school movie is showing what it's really like. And I mean, I know there's extremes and some of them have various forms of depression and things like that. And not everyone goes through that, but boy, do a lot of people have some sort of some sort of mental breakdown or breaking point, or they have to sort of make a choice to get over a, tr a struggle that, that seems like the end of the world when they're in high school. And um, this movie just takes um, all of that so seriously. Like, the way I look at that film is, it's a grown-up film, right, set in a high school, and it's high school setting, because they're not really in the high school all that much but they're at high school parties and they're hanging out and and i just thought it was i think it, i think of it as a really beautiful film and i, I kind of like to call it a beautiful uh, it's beautifully tragic and tragically beautiful like uh, there's all these parts where the main character there is struggling with something in life and you don't quite know what it is and you kind of slowly have to piece it together through flashbacks and that whole storyline is horrific when you find out what it is and just him sort of dealing with a mental break because of that but all the while he's he's a loner he's alone and he meets these other outcasts that are way older than him 
and they're seniors and he's a freshman and he's just trying to fit in and then they're going to go off to university and he's going to be alone again. And there's all these like, you know, all these ebbs and flows and you think of that's what high school is like, right? You don't necessarily meet the person just you know, your best friend just because they're in the grade with you. You find somebody who you who you really mesh with because you have this bigger pool of people than you do in grade school, right? You find these, you have all these people and all of a sudden there's, oh, that's, I, I didn't know it, but that's gonna, That's my best friend right there. And that's kind of what that, yeah. Well, that's like, yeah, yeah. To that. I'm three years yeah, older than Mike and we met in high school. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and we're years apart, right? And um, so this, the story there, right? And, and it's sort of beautiful. And I mean, let's be honest, like any film that is a high school film and the Smiths is a main staple uh, on the soundtrack. I'm going to, I'm going to thumbs that up. And um, I just love the quote in this one um, that um, I think it's Ezra Miller's character, Patrick, that says it first. But then I think Charlie, the main character, says it later to Emma Watson. Uh, we accept the love we think we deserve. Yeah. And that's kind of like the whole um, story of that film, really. Like just sort of accepting things that maybe you shouldn't. And and you're better than that. And you don't have to just settle for certain things. And it takes a while for them to find each other and find love. And it's, I don't know, it's a I film every time I watch it, a whole film, I'm just kind of like, this is beautiful, but I'm sad. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. But I love it. And I could watch it again. <laughs> Um, and I just love that the, the author did that. He directed it. So he did it the way he wanted it to look, you know? So, so that's my number two perks of being a wolf. Yeah. For good but, things. I've never seen it, but it's got outstanding reviews. If I, if I hadn't used that on, uh, I used that on the books made into a movie yeah. uh, list. I they definitely um, would have made mine. Uh, it uh, again, Mike used that quote. My one has one of my favorite quotes in it. And it's, uh, I want you to know that I'm both happy and sad and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be. Yeah. And I'm like that, that, that quote has always stuck with me uh, because it, it, again, it's uh, follows that the whole line of the movie where he's having a great time with these friends, but un there's this underlining sadness and you mm -hmm. don't know why. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, it's just powerful. It's a powerful book, powerful movie. Uh, and I, I think everybody, all the actors, young actors, whole film is pretty much young actors other than like, you know, Dermot Mulroney, the parents and stuff, but um, they do spectacular. And I don't know, so say what you want. And I think Emma Watson does a, Emma Watson does a great job. She's putting on her American accent and everything. Um, I connect to all of those characters, Same. you know? Yeah. So, so that's a good job for them, but yeah. Awesome. Great picks. What you got, cool. Scott? Uh, so I wasn't really sure. Uh, there's so, like, my number two, I'm going to start with a caveat that there's so, so, so many school films. And I'm like, sure. okay, there's some that are really, really, really good. And I'm sure we'll see some other ones, like iconic films and, like, Dead Poet Society and Lean on Me and movies like that that are incredible, incredible films that I really enjoyed that I should put on and talk about. And then I'm like, God, I there's this one movie that came out when I was 12 years old and it was a big deal and the sequel was amazing and the third film was really important to me and it just kind of encapsulated like a really dumb, cool side of high school and it's a dumb film that does not age well. Uh, but just for how special <laughs> the franchise is, I'm going with 1999's American Pie. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So American Pie, no, it's it's great. It's great. It's cool. Like I said, there's a lot of movies that do the high school experience well, um, that show this dichotomy of of levels of characters. There's and like clueless and ten things I hate about you and so much, even not another team movie, all do this and for probably better. But then you see a movie like American Pie, and I'm just like, that movie was so special to me. I remember exactly the first time I saw it. I think I was on like a a bus trip for a hockey team. I had done some like some equipment stuff for like a hockey team for like credit in grade school, <laughs> and I know they were all older. And we put it on, and this was like night on like maybe 2000, right when it got the DVD. And I was like, this movie's. Incredible. I've never seen a movie like this. Again, being 12, 13, it was like my foray into like the R-rated comedy realm. Uh, and again, the sequel, which is my favorite of the three. And the third one, this is probably my least favorite of the four, to be honest. I do like Reunion quite a bit as well. Um, but American Pie, it's just got a great cast of characters, a young Hollywood at that time, an interesting look because they become names, but no one ever really achieves like that next level of success short of Sean Scott for like a minute. But you get 
you know, there's a lot that I take away from this movie that I really like that on surface value, you, you know, you can take it for what it's worth, but then you look at the characters and you see like Oz and Finch and, and Jim, but they're all, and Kevin and they're all best friends, but they're all very different. So you got a guy like Oz that I kind of like, and he's not, Chris Klein is not a good actor. Ke- yeah. Chris no, Klein not really. He's not a good actor. He's <laughs> terrible. He's the weakest part of the film, but you see him and he's like this lacrosse player and this star, but he also likes to <laughs> sing and he wants to sing and dance to get the girl. And there's definitely something there that's like really interesting that I watch and go, oh, that's really cool. And Stifler in you show and Scott is an incredible scene stealing performance, literally I, to the point where I did a podcast. He was paid eight thousand dollars for this film. He made fifteen million for American Wedding. That's how much Sean William Scott wow. became a star from this movie in this franchise. Again, it's just an incredible like look at high school done from a really stupid idea, um, but yeah. ultimately at its core, it's a very sweet film on relationships and dorky guys jocks anybody trying to lose the virginity and it just makes this really fun kind of lightning in a bottle story that like i said was so special to me at that age uh, and introducing me to the r-rated comedy realm um and that i put american pie as my number two yeah it's solid i think it, it becomes like whereas one of the films i chose is like what high school might be like this is like what you wish it was like you wish Kinda, it was all yeah. parties you wish you had these friends you mm. wish you know what I mean? Uh, what's her name there? Uh, Natasha, whatever, whatever Natasha her name Leone. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shannon Elizabeth. No, yeah, Shannon Elizabeth. Oh, I think uh, Natasha Leone. Oh, yeah. No, no. Well, oh, okay. Take it's any weird, one of them. Yeah. yeah. You wish it, you know, oh, that Shannon Elizabeth is on and is all the way live in that film. Yeah, yeah. So like you go through this, this is like, oh man, why, why didn't, why didn't a Ford exchange student come and live at my house and all these <laughs> weird things that, you know, uh, so it's a perfect example of like the, uh, high school or school movie like you know goofy comedy so i'm glad you put that on the list because like um for sure i watched that film multiple times right like that i don't know that i've seen i think i've seen the first two maybe three but um i didn't go farther into the series but um there's a bunch of movies like that and you like can't hardly wait in those ones where you have all those actors like you said that were all that in all of the film. Cast type. Yeah. yeah and and they didn't go anywhere yeah. but those were fun movies to watch at the time Right? They remind you of your own experience watching them, right? When you were in high school. Yeah. Can't believe you were 12 when you saw that. Yeah, I was born in 87. So this came out in 99. So I, I again, was... like, it would have been cool if I was in high school, but it was that movie that, like, when I got to high school in 01, uh, 2 was coming out, and I'm just like, this is unbelievable, guys. We're we're going to watch these on these new DVD things and watch them every week. So it's one that I watched. <laughs> new a lot. Yeah. Amazing. I was yeah. leaving high school. We, we could. Yeah. <laughs> these new dvd things that uh enhanced viewing watching of uh of of those m- movies specifically because you can pause the <laughs> crystal clear picture i don't know what you're talking about what what you can do you mean <laughs> rewind with ease slow-mo now, now, frame now, by frame now, how were laser discs for that could you do that on a laser disc Laser discs, yeah, were pretty much the same, but they were expensive and huge. Yeah, yeah. I just I didn't know how the interface was with it. No, it's the same. It's okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, my number two is uh almost the same uh, in terms of uh, it's that big ensemble cast uh set in high school, um all your friends hanging out looking for a party. My number two is. Dazed and confused. Oh, nice! Right. Yeah. Story about the last day of school. Yeah. For um, yeah, for them, they're going to be coming back for a senior year. Um, it also tells a story about the middle school kids who are leaving middle school and they're going to be freshmen yeah. uh, when they enter high school in September, which is interesting because in the movie, there's they have that the whole initiation thing going on where they uh. Um, the main characters, the uh, jocks, pretty much they try to uh, rustle up all of the graduating middle schoolers and whack them on the ass with the paddles and stuff. And I find that it was hilarious that they caught them as they were leaving middle school for the last day of school. It's not like they were coming in and it's not like it's, you know, first day of school in September and you have clear vision of, okay, these are all the new kids. We're going to get them during you know, we have a year to get them uh, a year of uh, lunch breaks to uh, whack these, uh, beat these kids up. 
<laughs> which is the legend that went around in my high school. It's like you don't get caught. Oh yeah. You, you like try and keep yourself safe for you know grade nine. Watch yourself at lunchtime because they're gonna come get you. You'll be pushing. I think I've only heard of or something down the hall. Oh, I think I only heard of one person in my grade nine class getting attacked. Initiated. And initiated yeah and my high school they had um, assembly based on yeah that. they used to duct tape them to the oh, walls yeah. walls oh yeah in the assemblies and they they fell down it was yeah. the weirdest thing <laughs> yeah yeah so school, the school like the shaving was, cream and all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff they condoned it yeah oh wow that's, a big thing. Was, that's insane a thing. and then all of a sudden like it stopped yeah then people <laughs> realized <laughs> it isn't a good idea yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's an excellent it's an excellent story about the last day of uh, school, mm. the first day of summer. Essentially, everyone's getting together, trying to find a party. We're all just hanging out. Takes place over like a twenty four hour period, um, and it's just you know friends hanging out, listening to music. The soundtrack is amazing, and uh, yeah. it's Slink later, man. He never disappointed us in that, and it's uh, so well used in the movie when they're uh, whacking the one kid to Alice Cooper. You, you, you're not exactly rooting for them, but you're enjoying the scene because it fits so well. Oh, just a nice guy. Uh, absolutely. And, but, and Ben Affleck uh, is in it. So ben see, Affleck who, again. what's going to be in your number one? Is it all? <laughs> <laughs> again, and it was school ties and Dason confused. He felt he was, he was scared that he was going to get typecast as like the bully. <laughs> he didn't want to, he didn't want to spend the rest of his career shoving kids into their lockers. He was so scared of that. <laughs> Thankfully, Kevin Smith gave him uh, yeah, the chasing Amy role. No, yeah. Mall Rats. No, yeah, he's, he's, like, he's a bully in that too, right? Yeah. And then but it's no. chasing Amy. Chasing Amy is the role that all of the producers saw and is like, oh, this guy can act. Let's put him in Armageddon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, example. Uh, 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 that's funny. Um, Days and Confused, my number two. I like it. Me I, I like it too. Me, me and my friends were obsessed with this film. Uh, we quoted it constantly. Uh, love, love, love this film. I it was vying for my list, but I, I kind of went with a rule that the majority of my movies I wanted to be in school, like the sure. the, the school was part of the thing, and that's kind of how I weeded it out. Or else, a one hundred percent would have made my list just because I love it. And uh, I what I was alluding to in my my last pick where. Uh, Days and Confused to me feels like high school for real, where there's the intermixing of groups, right? The people like wandered in and out of groups, and that kind of felt, <laughs> felt what high school was like, at least for me, was that yes, you had your cliques, you had your jocks, you had your you know uh, your popular, your cool kids, your your nerds, whatever, but there was there wasn't the the segregation with that. Like people hung out all the time with one another. We went to all the same parties. We like hung out outside of school that must have been it, nice for you <laughs> <laughs> but like it, to, to me there, there wasn't there wasn't it i did i didn't see that that segregation <laughs> where we all a lot of the people had the same classes together so we all were friendly like i never had any enemies in high school it was like i talked to everybody i'd like hung out with everybody i, I like we didn't like it wasn't like super clicky like you see in most high school movies where you know you have your super like divided clicks right where it's like oh don't talk to them you're like no that's kind of not. i right. thought we went to the same high school i feel like maybe we didn't <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe this is was like the me. affair where the same thing happened from two different views yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we there, was, there was a different there was a difference in years between we us, need to right? write a but, screenplay <laughs> and make this happen but like did days and confused for me kind of feels like that where you just kind of like you can you're cool to hang out with everybody and like the the, the main character pink he's cool with everybody right he hangs yeah. out with the nerds he hangs out he takes the freshman under his wing and he hangs out with the cool kids the stoners uh he kind of moves through the different crowds so and maybe that maybe that's me maybe i'm the pink See, and that's what that i got from oz funny enough from american crowds, pie where right? it's like you're friends with everybody who's very eclectic yeah mm -hmm. so that so i hear you. that's why i relate that. to that is because like i'm the, the i'm mr pink i'm uh moving through the different crowds and i can fit in through these different groves but anyway but i love yeah days and cues love love in case love. you didn't know i'm kind of a big deal <laughs> <laughs> i know i don't see that i don't see that myself i'm just easy going i'm just like whatever man whatever it's all good 
All right. So what's your? Uh, All right. My number. Two, we got number two. Oh, this is my number two. That's okay. So we're gonna go with my number two. So there, you know, when you talk about um, school movies and high school movies, uh, the number one name that comes up is always John Hughes, right? You talk about John mm-hmm. Hughes, and I'm sure we might talk about John Hughes and thing. We're not gonna talk about John Hughes for me, uh, because I love John Hughes movies. But I, there's a movie that from around the same era that doesn't get enough love for me. I've loved it for a long time, and I never hear people talking about it, uh, and I don't think a lot of people have even seen it. Uh, and that movie is three, three o'clock high. Uh, uh, yeah, three, three o'clock high is from 1987. It's directed by Phil Genou, uh, executive uh, produced by Steven Spielberg. Uh, so Steve, Steven Spielberg decided he wanted to uh, have a John Hughes type movie, and so he got uh, John Phil Genou and uh, to direct it, and Richard Matheson to. Uh, to uh, uh, write it, and the cinematographer uh, actually was Bar- Barry Sonnenfeld, who oh. uh, Men in Black and that kind of fame. Uh, and so it's the cinematography is amazing. It's like it feels super epic. Like it, the the there's the uh, what it is is this is Jerry, and so Jerry wakes up in the morning and his first line is, "Oh, it's gonna be one of those days." And so to me, this film kind of feels like a John Hughes movie mixed with uh, Martin Scorsese's After Hours, where all these terrible things just happen to the, the over the course of a day or a course of a night to one person. And it just escalates and just gets worse and worse. And so Jerry, uh, mm-hmm. all these things start happening to him. He's late for school. Uh, his mom did the laundry, but she forgot to put it in the in the the dryer and so it's he has to like dry his clothes in the microwave and so he gets to school and so he when he gets to school he has one of my favorite shots in there and it's a it's a, a tracking shot as it goes through all the kids hanging out in front of the school and all the kids are hanging out in front of the school you have all the your different clicks and hanging out in front of the school and it kind of follows through and you hear over here conversations and they're all talking about this new kid and the new kid uh is named buddy Ravel. And so the, the the conversation all links together, right, between the different conversations. And they're all telling the story about this new kid, Belly Ravel, and the legend that, oh, he broke a kid's neck. Oh, he beat up this teacher. Oh, he did all these things like, oh, man, he's crazy. And whatever you do, don't touch him because he hates to be touched. Right. And so Jerry gets to school. And so his uh he's he writes for the school newspaper and so the school newspaper editor decides oh we should write a new story about the the new kid in class and so uh, which is buddy revel and so buddy revel i'll uh, go back to it is uh, played um i'm trying to remember his name uh he he who actually plays uh the bad guy in kindergarten cop yeah that's who that is uh, yeah 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 hmm. uh, um uh, shoot what is his name uh anyway he I'll he he uh, he meets up with him. At, uh, actually, he's in the bathroom and he's at the the stall. Richard Tyson is his name. Uh, so Richard Tyson uh, plays Buddy Ravel. He is in the bathroom. Uh, Jerry's in the bathroom. And and I'm uh, sorry, I didn't mention this. Jerry uh, is uh, the same guy who plays 3D in Back to the Future. Uh, the kid wears 3D oh, glasses yeah, 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 and Biff's yeah, game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so uh, Jerry's at the bathroom <laughs> stall. He's at the urinal. And a guy walks in and it's Buddy Ravel. And so there's always this like awkward moment where they're standing side by side pissing. And so Jerry leans, like looks over at him, starts talking to him. And Buddy Ravel's like, what the hell? And so he starts telling him, like, I just want to write this stupid story about you and the thing. And the like, Buddy Ravel takes it the wrong way, like, oh, you want to make me look stupid? What? And so then Jerry's like, no, no, no. He puts his hand on his shoulder, and you just see like uh Buddy Ravel look at his hand, like, are you serious? And so then shit escalates, right? You're like, I will see you at three o'clock. Uh, and after school, and I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna beat you up, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and so this is like first thing in the morning, and so <laughs> so as the as the story continues, like he's trying everything he can do to get out of uh get out of this fight and do everything he can, and I won't get into it because like each step is hilarious, uh, and like it just escalates and escalates, and to the point where like you're just like, 
this is insane. How many of these, like how much insane things can happen to it, but it's got a whole ton of people in, uh, in it. Um, Mitch Fleggy, uh, um, Skinner from X Files plays one of the best characters in it. He's mm. the truant officer, the duker. I'm the duker. Nobody gets away from the duker. That's Mitch Fleggy. Uh, but uh, just hysterical. Uh, and and it's really heartfelt too. Like I I love uh, one of the things I love about it. I kind of and with oh uh, um sir to uh, uh when it came out it bombed and so much that yeah. um <clears throat> Spielberg took his name off of it because it's so dark it's a dark satirical film it's kind of the anti John Hughes film where it takes all these like tropes that John Hughes built and go and kind of goes against it and one of the things that goes against and I liked was that him and his sister you you you, know, you come to have these these tropes where there's always the the brother sister rivalry and they hate each other but in this they they love each other and they have they kind of are a team and she supports him and like goes through him and I, like i when i rewatched it this time i was like oh man i really like that because it's not common you usually expect the opposite right you expect the ferris bueller, bueller jennifer gray kind of situation right where they're like trying to get at each other anyway but uh yeah definitely if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen this movie definitely check it out it is an underrated gem i love it i i um when you start talking about 80s school movies like this is definitely this would have been my number one but there's one that's definitely way higher than this for me which is saying a lot because i love this movie and none of people talk about this movie at all doesn't get the love so i have not seen this movie i first heard about that movie like two years ago when fist fight the ice cream oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. movie yeah, yeah, yeah. that's Everyone what that looked like, like it's three yeah. o'clock high and i was like well what's that movie and then that's the first time and only time i've ever heard i wikipedia it but I yeah get, it's funny that you honestly, bring it up i don't get it like it doesn't have the star obviously it doesn't have the star power right it doesn't you, know, you don't know like i had to look up richard tyson and you know, you know uh i don't even know the other guy's name uh Casey says mako it's messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you said. Uh, but it doesn't have the star power. But man, this movie, I'm telling you, 100%, if you guys haven't seen this movie, you guys will love it. It is a great, it is It is a laugh riot. There's a ton of funny stuff and it's a, like a emotional, heartfelt movie too. Like it's, it's fantastic. It's a great yeah. film. Yeah, you said two names there. Phil Jonu, who yeah. I know as the director of the U2 documentary movie, Rattling, Rattling Hum, yeah. which is amazing. And, also, and before this movie, he did all the their music videos. And you said Steven Spielberg, who I know from this shelf <laughs> here. <laughs> and I have never even heard of that movie. Man, mm. fantastic. So there's, that's your homework. Homework. Yeah, homework. Well, Thanks I'm, I'm for giving team. us homework on <laughs> the school episode. School episode. <laughs> I'm the teacher. Go Go out and do some homework. Watch this movie. All right, well, I'll get some more homework here on honorable mentions. <laughs> so I got for you, uh, I mean, obviously this had to be somewhere on the list, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That is one of my honorables. And the Under the Radar Honorable, which I wish I could put at number one because I love it, but I'm saving it for hopefully using it somewhere else, Toy Soldiers. Oh, nice. Yeah. I absolutely love that movie. Yep. And um, if you have not seen I'm not even going to say anything because it's honorables. You got to watch it. It's amazing. But right. quick, who's in that? Quickly, Lou Gossett Jr., uh, Sean, is it Sean Astin, um, right. um, uh, Will Wheaton. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Scott. Me, I got two. I'm going to do Rushmore easily, and my second one just to shout it out because, like I said, when I was actually in high school, this movie came out, and I was like, "Well, this is awesome." The Girl Next Door, which <laughs> not oh, yeah. about. Woo! I love me the Girl <laughs> Next Door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, JFK effort. obsessed. So, oh, uh, and yeah, there's a lot of porn in there. Can, so. can, Canadian content. Canadian content. Yeah, at least you got <laughs> to the choir. I know. Uh, this, I know particularly this section right here. Uh, it's got some Cuthbert love going on. Uh, uh my two honorable mentions: Lean on Me, amazing yes, movie. Yes. Yeah, and Summer School. Ah, Ooh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Mark, Mark Harmon. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Lean on me. I can't believe I didn't have that on my radar. I used to watch that all the time. Love yep. it. Love it. <laughs> so my honorable mentions have been mentioned. <laughs> 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 and so we're gonna we're gonna put them back up. And what do you that got? It's Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And Fast Times at Richmond. Yeah. Not talk about it. Solid. Solid. 
Okay, well, well, we'll uh, as well uh, keep it here. This is me. Back to me. No, it's me. Oh, it's you. You. Sorry. Never mind. We won't keep it here. I got to say, I'm loving all the movies on this list. And there's just so far, I think there's been two I haven't seen out of all of them. And I, I want to go watch them. So that for me is a solid list. Um, all right. So here we go. Number one. Uh, no question. No doubt. If you had asked my wife, she would have said it 100 times out of 100. And that is, let me just hit share here. That is. This film, I'll give you a moment uh, to look here. Yeah. Good old it. Tracy Flick. Oh, oh my I get God. so much more. I there's a certain point that I'm out. This like, is the creme de la creme for me of a of a school and a high school movie. And I I am not a huge Matthew Broderick fan, but there's just something about the dynamic between how insanely intense Reese Witherspoon is. And how sort of goofy and how he doesn't really care. Like, he loves doing his job. This is election, by the way, if I didn't say yeah, it. Yeah, I was just going to say it. Um, <laughs> are you going to tell us that this is election? I do that all the time. I do that all the time. 99's election. Get, do some research, people. No. Um, Alexander Payne directed this. He did The Descendants as well as other things. And uh, I just love the dynamic between Tracy Flick, who's in the photo there in the center. That's uh, Reese Witherspoon, who's just... The whole point is she's trying to be class president, like, you know, for the high school... And no one's going up against her. It's going to be a clear, decisive win. It's going to be her. And then Matthew Broderick's character, who is he's just a high school teacher, basically, and he sort of is involved in the, the elections and he, he does teach his ethics and all that. He just, just he can't stand her so much that he basically, Chris Klein once again, right, gets uh, Paul Klein. Metzler to sort of run because he's popular to try and sabotage her whole election run. <laughs> and so, like, the, I just love the dynamic there that, he really has no, you know, horse in the race. It doesn't mean anything to him. And, like, school government at minimal, you know, can do anything, right, as far as changing anything. But he just is like, no, there's something about her. I don't want her to win. So much so that he eventually rigs the whole vote. And his whole life is just falling apart throughout the film in sort of the background while the high school election is going on. And I don't know what it is. Like, I understand Scott saying, I don't get it. And, like, my wife's like, I don't know. But something about this movie... And it, 99 is when I left high school, graduated high school. And so I don't know if that's what it is, just that sort of senior year kind of thing. But it's the dark comedy, too. Like, there's just so, it's so dark and miserable throughout. And just the way he uses the music and that, like, all the sounds that they do when things are happening, the close-ups and, like, the facial expressions. I feel like it's Reese Witherspoon's, like, perfect <laughs> perfect role although other people will argue <laughs> that. that's called apex but, mountain yeah, yeah <laughs> sure but uh i just think uh it's a solid solid film there was no question that was my number one so. it's an incredible I, I enjoy it it's i just watched it like in april again and the it, right, i think it's right up into the subplot with like the affair and his friend's wife and I'm you could do like, without that. Yeah. I'm you can like, do without how that. long yeah. is this movie? It's like an hour 40. It's a standard movie. It's around that. And he's booking the hotel and he leaves the school. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. This but hold on, hold on. How funny three is that hours scene? long? As much as I can't, that affair part, I can kind of get rid of the bee but how, thing or something. Yeah. 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 Weird. But how funny is it that, and it may be just from the behind the scenes sort of as a teacher, because this is not something you would ever really do, but he leaves the class to yeah. take a test, which we just talked about that concept. He leaves the class to take an open book test and he's like, okay, you got this much time. And then he just takes off, goes and buys flowers, goes and washes his balls in the tub, like to get ready for this whole thing. And then he comes back and then the test is over and he collects all their papers. And I'm like, this is insane. This guy, you should not be teaching. Like, it's just, this. I just love it. Yeah. So there you have it. Number one, cool. Scott, what you got? Well, I don't really like my Matthew Broderick sad mopey and other shape. <laughs> I like my Matthew Broderick. This is amazing. This is amazing. That's awesome fantastic. with a hot girlfriend and a cool <laughs> best friend and scheming and everything. And it's 1986's John Hughes, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Look at that man so again what i'll say is i wasn't sure if i was going to put it because like ab said i wanted to do like school films and this and i'm like wow there's very little school in it and it's kind of everything else and it's it's just so much more than a school film in it but then you're like okay you got the main three and you got rooney but the fifth character if it's not jennifer gray is probably the concept of school he's sure. ducking out of school for the whole day and it's kind of like this i mean that's what rooney represents closing in on him and that but again 
him leaving and skipping school for the day with his friends is the main driving force. So if it's if that's not a school film, then I don't know what is. So my number one school film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, it's a classics classic. Uh, and like I said, it stands up and holds the test of time. And it's just, like I said, if you, I don't know, I'm drawn to these charismatic, larger than life <laughs> characters. And what I really like about movies and stuff is you look and go, that's a star. And Broderick is full force, 100 gigawatt smile, talking, breaking the fourth wall, being uh, a movie star. And it's him and Alan Ruck and Sloan. I forget the actress's name who plays her. Yeah, but again, as they Sarah. go through the day of Chicago, yeah. me, Sarah. Yeah. 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 And as they go through Chicago, it's, it's you know, John Hughes does this and all that. But it's pretty much a love letter. They go to Wrigley. They go to the Museum of Art. Uh, they're touring throughout and all that. And what needs to be said, I'm pretty sure anyone who will watch this video for as long as it's on YouTube has most likely seen this film. And there's not much more to go in on to it that. It's I got just, a hot take. I got a hot take. Got a hot is, take. If it's, is it the one that he was imagination? No. My hot take on this is, okay, Ferris Bueller grows up to be the teacher in That's election. what everyone, that's why he took <laughs> it. You <laughs> yeah, got to yeah. read Best Movie Year Ever I'm in 1999. You. That's why he takes the role because they even say, <laughs> They're like, what if Ferris Bueller was beaten down by life and became that? So there's, well, it's not even that. It's like not... he, he's he's. This is a classic case, and, and and Ferris Bueller is is the epitome of an asshole. I I'll say it to this he day. He is the he's horrible gonna call, human. He's going to call. He's a horrible human. He's a horrible <laughs> I love human. That scene. Yeah, he's a horrible human. Great. So the whole concept that great, he though. he lived his best life in high school, and that's it was the peak of his life. And now the yeah. best he can do is he's teaching eco- high school economics or, or ethics, I should say. And he's, he's in high school and he's living a sad existence and he's not really happy with his wife. And so he's now trying to sabotage this other person in high school. I feel like he is Ferris Bueller as an adult. Kind of echoes are, you know, Broderick's life too. Because Broderick was a megastar and got in a big car crash, which derailed his career a couple of years. And That's true. came back, but he wasn't like the same. And the early 90s, he kind of like... I don't know. They, they talk about this in Rewatchables where like, hey, it's probably like him and what Michael J. Fox for a lot of the roles. And I mean, Fox just keeps getting these movies. And then, I mean, Broderick gets his life on Broadway and then election. But then other than that, like, it's kind of just, yeah, kind of just does a weird career trajectory from watching this. But again, yeah. what an incredible movie. What needs to be said? Like, oh, yeah. The dynamic solid. with the sister, Rooney, uh, following the music. Uh, again, we talked back on on cop films you know the beverly hills cop theme but you can go back to the, the like the chicka chicka dave yes. and like that the, that song or the oh yeah like there's an incredible songs yeah. that are like the chase scene dun, 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 are incredible can we petition like, funco to make a sloan pop too by the yeah, way yeah. you got you got cameron you yeah. got two ferrises you got no sloan this makes no sense True. Uh, you said that the school doesn't play a big part in it, but it does because it keeps flashing to what's going on yeah, in yeah. school without and it's him. Ben Stein, right? Ben and there's there, the whole sure. say Ferris thing that ha- keeps happening in school. Yeah, that's right? why I ultimately so. told myself because at first I was like, oh, I, but you're right. He's evading school and it shows the school and what the school what's does going to on rally. Yeah, yeah. it's the school film. So, my number yeah. one. I'm, I'm down. Um, Jennifer Grey is a real hidden gem in that movie. Oh, she's fantastic, man. I love I, uh, that. Charlie Sheen is a hidden gem in that movie. That's true. <laughs> Charlie but, but it's that scene as well. I, I watched it for the, not for the first time. I watched it uh, a few weeks ago because uh, I was doing all the John Hughes movies. Um, and that scene, it's Jennifer Grey and Charlie Sheen sitting in the uh, police station. At the end Drugs. of the, <laughs> at the end of that scene, they're making out and then eventually she's you know she's obviously falling for for charlie sheen and uh the mom comes and says genie let's go and uh i guess he at one point he asks her her name and she says genie but people like to call me shauna and i <laughs> laughed so hard that was a joke i missed i guess for 30 years because i laughed so hard when she oh. said that because it never comes nobody calls her shauna it's yeah just, just a throw alter away. ego she yeah. just came up with in her head that's yeah. hilarious. So I, got um, one t- I got two choices, which could be your number one. I don't want to mm. see which one it is. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I think I don't think my number one is going to be all that surprising. I mentioned it uh, when the topic was brought up. Um, my number one is about you know the first day of school. Essentially, I'm going through the whole uh, the whole school year, but it's <laughs> you know, and what magical adventure you go on 
uh, during that school year. My number one is Harry Potter and on this poster wow. says Sorcerer, but Philosopher's Stone. I watch these movies or like every year around this time in the, uh, during the school year because it's about, you know, going to school. It's about when we, when we, the initial, when we were talking about this title in the first place, we said uh, back to school movies. I was like, well, okay, this is number one for sure on my list. Absolutely. Because every movie starts with them going back to school. You got at least what? Seven of these movies take place or all eight of them take place in the school. Mm -hmm. I don't know of another franchise that can pull that off. Re keep returning to school. It's a place kids, you know, in the muggle world don't want to go to, but when they see this, it's like, Oh, I would love to go to Hogwarts. Of course. Why not? Um, but uh, this it also coincides with uh, a little thing I have going on uh, with my niece. Uh, she started junior kindergarten last year, and she she's just started senior kindergarten. Um, and her birthday is in September, so I decided I'll get her a Harry Potter book for every uh, year that she you know for the foreseeable future, um, as you know a way because for kids going to a new school can be scary. So I was like, here have your dad read this to you and you know, it'll liven up uh, the, the experience. It's yeah. about a kid who's Slow going to school. Yeah. Slow, slowly. So you don't get to the really creepy ones uh, right. too soon. <laughs> well, that was the thing. Um, I gave them the first book and so she's, her birthday's in September. Uh, so that was 2019, 2020 begins in January. Um, so they get pulled. Do you remember when kids got, kind of got pulled out of school march march yeah it was around exactly march so they burned through the book you know mm -hmm. they had nothing else to do but sit around and read <clears throat> and then her, her, <laughs> and then her parents called me up and they're like oh we're about to start the second book it's like no what are you talking about well yeah. you know we're just sitting around reading it uh we, we've burned through it it's like well i have the other one i was going to give it to her at her next birthday well yeah, we're, we're about to start it, it. <laughs> yeah almost i was like no stop no, I don't. so <coughs> that's Excuse funny me. they went through the first book in the first movie they started the second book which i gave to them in this uh second movie so in that year because now she's uh she's just turned five and she's gotten the third book and from there we'll see how how uh quickly <laughs> they burn through that one <coughs> yeah I'm, I'm slowly i'm slowly trickling through as you know i have the all of them of course and i've been doing this similar thing with my daughter with the illustrated ones. Yes, so, it's those copies. Yeah, They're okay, amazing. perfect. So Jim K, who illustrates them, has only gotten to book four. And so every they come out every year. So we're on book four, almost done at last two chapters or so, which I'm like, oh, this is gonna go one way or another when I read yeah. these last two chapters. And then we'll try and we'll try and hopefully make it through the film and uh, then get go, go along. But I called your shot here. There it is. I'll do it, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I mean, the entire Harry Potter series. It's it's you're right though. Uh, it, it, it's, they're all in school, but this the first one is the one because it's him finding about the school, go seeing it. We're all seeing what it's going to look like. Take the tour. They take the tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the one if you're going to pick any of them for a school school movie for sure. Yeah, definitely solid. Andrew, oh. wrap it up for us. What yeah, you got? Yeah. I, I am shocked. I can't believe. I mean, we had a John Hughes movie, so that kind of makes it okay, but I can't believe that Breakfast yeah. is not going to make it. I'm on surprised. I was is, waiting for you guys. I thought is, one of you. It is, not, it is not making it on there. I'm going anti John Hughes again. Uh, nice. This this movie came out in 1988. Uh, it <laughs> has been very controversy over the last few years. I loved it uh, since I was a teen. I saw, I, thought, I saw it probably, I didn't see it when it came out. I saw it when I was a teen. And it, I think it resonated a lot more with me when I was a teen. Uh, and that is directed by Michael Lehman. Oh. Heathers. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I knew that'd be your Christian one. Christian Slater. Yeah, I was just going to say, Mike's, Mike's one of Mike's all-time favorite actors, Christian Slater. Uh, this movie is the blackest of black comedies. Mm. Uh, it is... Uh, 
Veronica, who is Winona Ryder, is in high school, and she is in this like little clique of Heathers. The, all the rest of these girls in here, including Shannon Doherty on the left, uh, are all named Heather. And so they are the popular girls at the school, and they basically kind of terrorize the rest of the school uh, with their popularity and do all kinds of dumb stuff to people and like basically make fun of everyone. And she hates it. She like literally hates her life and hates uh what they are and like just is not happy with what's going on until <clears throat> so when jd comes in which is christian slater he's kind of the bad boy and he dresses all like grungy and gothy and in black and he's got the trench coat and all that stuff which is one of the reasons why it doesn't fly now but uh uh and so he kind of like starts ripping them apart and so she uh, she kind of takes notice of him and kind of falls in with him. And they, uh, in a roundabout way, uh, he JD is kind of a psychopath. And we kind of <laughs> figure that out as the movie goes along. And so he kicks up this plan to start killing off the Heathers one by one and kind of gets Veronica in on it. And uh, they, they start setting him up as suicides, teen suicides. And uh, it kind of backfires on them because the whole school and the community start rallying around it and start like making these kind of the black satires. They, they kind of make these girls out to be these saints and and they have these interviews like on camera where like, Oh, I loved her so much. She was amazing. Like the the best thing, uh, like she's one of my best friends and like thinking it's like idolizing these people after they've, you know, killed themselves. Uh, And so it, it's, it's uh it's it's really funny has a lot of quotable lines in it uh and like ultimately jd wants to blow up the school and there's a scene where he goes in starts shooting everybody in school uh and uh so that's why it kind of doesn't hold up with all the school shootings and Mm. like the stuff starts to blow up the school and stuff like that but it is ultimately it's a satire and you can see it as a satire and the 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 end message uh why you know foils his plans and he figures out that he's a like a a psycho and that you know all, all along that she didn't really want to be a part of his little schemes but uh in a kind of round by way she does uh but anyway i i love this movie i think it's hysterical and uh i i love the the super black comedy satire stuff the stuff with and some of the things that kind of ages badly too but it's really funny still is the the two dudes that kind of spread, starts spreading rumors about Winona Ryder saying that she went down on both of them at a party. And so she, they end up killing the both of them. And then um, saying that in their, in their suicide notes uh, saying that they were gay together and uh, they made like a, a, a suicide pact with each other. Cause they got, they couldn't hold it in any longer that they were gay. And one of the, one of the funniest things in there is the dad. And it's kind of funny and sad too, is the dad, and at the funeral saying like he goes son i know that you were homosexual uh but i still love you i love my gay son <laughs> he yelling, yelling it out and it, like the whole thing with the aftermath of that and like they're the, the and, and like again it, it's it's satiric it's not making fun of uh them as being gay it's making fun of like the reactions that the <laughs> the parents and the other students have to them being gay is so ridiculous. Like the, the way they act after they find out that these guys are supposedly gay is the satirical part in it. But I, I think it's hysterical, but uh, anyway, Heather's love Heather's. Can, uh, can we bring back those shoulder pads? That's what I'm, that's the whole time, man. I think I, mean, I have, I think I have a blazer with those shoulder pads in it. I was just thinking that the whole time shoulder pads, I mean, like, and it's it's Christian Slater doing his Jack Nicholson impersonation. <laughs> it's a lot of that. Through you mean his? You mean Never all stopped. of his? Yeah, his all his acting roles. Yeah, you mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, between the, I was it was kind of like between this and uh, Pump of the Volume because I love Pump of the Volume too. Uh, and so like it was kind of de- deciding which one <laughs> I think. And I, I I guess there was no question. Heather's is going to be my number one. I love, 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 love Heather's. Solid. Well, that's yeah. a nice list, gentlemen. A little bit of homework at the end, a couple of films to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, that's our list. And I hope everyone watching enjoyed it. Um, We're going to get a bunch of comments to be like, what the, what the hell, man? Where's the breakfast club? Where's breakfast club? I mean, 
We can do another and list of six and candles. Yeah, <laughs> clueless. Well, I know, that was what clueless. I thought. I thought yeah. clueless would be I on your list and dead poet too. society. I'm like, well, Matt's gonna know. have clueless and dead poet society. I thought I clueless think. was gonna be on Mike's. I thought clueless was gonna be on Mike's for sure. <laughs> You love clueless. clueless. Clueless was a close yeah. cut, and I've never seen Dead Poet Society. What? Yeah, I thought <laughs> I for the, this whole time I thought you were in love with it. I thought you oh how did your gosh. life? How did that not Sean make Leonard. the movies you haven't yeah. seen? Yeah, why isn't that on? Oh, wow. okay. Well, that having said insane. all this, <laughs> we we need people to tell us what their favorites are. Yes, I need everyone to watching, that. please write your top five school back to school movies in the comments below. Tell also, us what idiots we are for not having put it on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Initiate us into uh, your school uh, <laughs> click and whatnot. Um, also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe the video. It helps the channel. Uh, go to wearitproud.ca for all your Mac Flash merch and wearables. And I think that's going to do it for us. Anything else? Did I forget to mention anything? Uh, yeah. Be cool. Stay in school. <laughs> Flash and exists. I would love to end it with that, but also take the Mac Flash oh, yeah, yeah. quickie quiz. Uh, Consider that a test. The, there you go. Cons- yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure uh, at least three questions are going to be about Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so if you don't know the answer, just put Rushmore. It's probably the right. Give one. give Rushmore a spin, and then take the Mac Flash uh, five quiz. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.